Hi, my name is Dan Low, and I'm going to show you how to write a program to parse the combined arguments in Windows environments. So let's first start Microsoft Visual Studio. And my version is 2010. Any other versions like 2008, 2005, the operations are pretty much similar to the one I'm going to show you. So let's first create a new project. So click on the new project. And then select the Microsoft Win 32 console application. Then set your project folder and your project name. In this tutorial, I'm going to set my project location to drive C then and my Windows project. The project name I'm gonna set is command nine test. So I have that click next. And at this window, you want to empty the project to be checked. Otherwise, the wizard will create some other headers, which are not necessary. So click finished and make sure you select console application. So once you get to the workspace of the Visual Studio, Let's add a C source into it. So select add new item. And select C++ file. Well, even though we're going to add a C file. So you, it's OK you not know, to set a C++ file. But then we're going to enter the name to be main.c. OK. So in the main.c, file we're gonna key in some c code first we're gonna include the send io.h followed by the main method so the arguments to the main method are the individual and a character double pointers the individual argument will receive number of arguments from the command line the arc will receive the command arguments from the command line. So with these two settings, you will be able to retrieve arguments from the command line. So I normally set the end of main comments at the end of the main function. So I know pretty much that's the end of it. In case you have a really huge main function, then you know where is the end of the main function. Then I put a print line oh, there. So to test it out if these programs are working in this environment. So this test is crucial, especially if you are using one of the desktop computers in the main app. You want to make sure that everything's working. So I'm going to test some simple trivial applications just like this to test it out if it's working or not. At this point, uh, we will see we will see the print down there. So the environment is now ready for you to develop your programs. So our next task is to uh, add the command line 
to the system. Something like this, if your program command line test, that's your program, and followed by a number of arguments, A, B, C, D, dash X, dash Y, dash Z, and followed by maybe some values for that switch. Like one, two, three for the test three for the switch test Z. And the four, five, six for the switch dash X. That's the normal you know, arguments we will set. So in this tutorial, we're going to we, we are going to read in all those arguments into the programs so we can uh, perform the task based on the command nine arguments. So in order to do that, we need to right click on the project and select options or properties properties, then select the backend. And after that, you will see a command nine layer. Okay. So in this case, we're gonna put the arguments there uh, for the debugging purpose. During development, you want to put the arguments there. It seems that uh, you're gonna fix the arguments but this is for debugging purpose. In reality, after you develop your programs, you can run your program with any arguments you like. So here we're gonna demonstrate how we're going to read down those arguments into the program. So we first, we print out the arc C, which indicates the number of arguments supplied in the command line. And we're gonna print the first argument arc v sub zero okay and then remove remove the print line to the hello test then compile it and run it called you can you can uh, type control F5. Okay. And arc sub V is the first argument. And arc C is the number of arguments in the system. So now we click on <clears throat> the little triangle and run it. Okay, now we got something. The arc C is 10, and arc sub V, arc V sub zero is the program itself, actually. So now we're gonna count the number of arguments we supplied. Again, go right click on the project and select the property, then click on the button, then count how many arguments we supplied at this point. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine arguments. But why the arc C is equal to 10? Well, the thing is it counts the program itself as one. So altogether nine arguments we supplied plus the program itself Altogether, there are 10 arguments. Therefore, arc C is equal to 10. And arc sub V is actually the first argument, which is the program itself. The actual programs, the actual arguments supplied by the user are starting from arc sub, arc V sub one. Now we're gonna <clears throat> print out all the 
arguments using a loop. So in order to do that, we need to have a loop variable i. And after that, we use a for loop. And then i goes from 0 to 1 less than arc c. And on each iteration, we're going to print out each argument. And at this point, we don't need to print out the arc sub in the loop. So to print it before we enter the loop. Then on each iteration, we're going to print out v sub i. Therefore, we put the, another integer there. So we need to supply integer variable i there. And then that's it about the loop. And again, I put the end of for there as the end marker for the for loop. Same reason when we put the end marker for the main method. Now we can run it and then see what happened. Control F5. So now you see all the arguments are printed out. So from the program name itself, and then ABCD-X, 1, 2, 3, Y, 4, 5, 6, and Z, and this is Z. So place any key to continue. Now what's next is we're going to set some value to some variables that will keep the command and switches values. So for example, if you want to keep the dash x value, you know, which is the value followed by dash x, one, two, three. Okay. So you can create a variable and put a variable in the loop. And whenever we detect dash x, then the next one should be in the value assigned to it. So we can base on this mechanism to set variable for the command as, uh, with the command as reach values. So in this test, we're going to have a variable x value. So we need an integer variable x value. And we can initialize x value to 0, just in case you don't receive anything. Okay. Then it has the default value, 0. So what's next is we need to find the dash x switch. So inside a loop, we need to compare each argument against the dash x. If we got it, then the next one will be the value to be set. So to compare dash x to the arguments, in C, we use a string compare, S-T-R-C-M-P. So S-T-R-C-M-P receives two arguments. The first one, of course, we're going to compare dash x. So we set dash x. The next one, act v sub i. And the string compare function will return zero if you find the match as x and x v sub i. So we simply say if not, that means that the string compare returns zero, then we do something. So inside the if statement, we're going to assign the next argument to x value. So in order to use the string compare, you need to include string.h header.
Then we assign the next argument with the arg v sub i plus one. So x value is assigned a value of arg v sub i plus one. However, arg v sub plus sub i plus one is a string. The left hand side is integer, you cannot assign integer to you cannot assign string to an integer variable. Therefore we need to compare com, convert the string to integer using the A2OI. A2I is a standard library function. So at this time uh, the compiler cannot recognize it. Therefore you need to include the standard lib.h header. followed by the header string.h. So pound include standard lib.h. Okay, save it. Now let's run the program to see what happened. Control F5. So as you can see that now we got the value, x value assigned, but we don't see anything in output because we didn't, we didn't print it out. Therefore we had to print it out and then we check its value. And save it, run it, control F5. Okay, now you can see that arc C is 10, X value is 1, 2, 3. So let's double check if 1, 2, 3 is the argument followed by dash X. Again, right click on the project, go to the property, and then check what value next to dash X. That's 1, 2, 3, that's correct. So at this point, you're learning how to read and parse the command line switches. And all other command line switches can be handled this way. Okay. And that's all I have. It. That's all I have for these clips. With the clips. Have a good day. Bye.